Coming up, putting on the Ritz to the tune of millions of dollars. Keeping exotic chickens safe, this Akbash knows his stuff. And this Doberman is a guide dog for another dog. Meet Zelda, supermodel. Facial hair, jowls, and fangs are definite assets for this babe whose image is at the core of the Zelda Wisdom Company, an empire worth millions of dollars. Her killer 323232 figure is featured on greeting cards, collectibles, and stationery. Zelda's wacky outfits help inspire the Zelda Wisdom, upbeat slogans that accompany her image. Tomorrow is the swimsuit shoot, but Zelda has put on a few pounds, so the suit may not fit. Like all models, Zelda has to keep her weight in check, because there's always the competition to consider. Yeah. Zelda, the multimillionaire, shares her luxury mansion with marketing maven Carol Gardner and another Zelda. Red-collared baby Zelda is being groomed to replace the queen one day, and she can't wait for her own moment of glory. The English Bulldog is a thick-set, medium-sized dog with a smooth coat, a heavy, low-slung body, sturdy limbs, and a short-faced head. The breed is ordinarily dignified, gentle and loving. Zelda's problem is that she isn't active enough to burn off the high-calorie treats she gobbles up during shoots. Shane Young has been photographing her for three years. It's difficult because we like to uh, give her the things that she likes because she works very hard. She deserves, you know, treats and whatnot. Mm. But uh, it, weight with Zelda is definitely an issue. She has no complex. Uh, her, her theory, if you got it, flaunt it. Round women have more to give. Zelda may be untroubled by her weight, but Carol isn't. Zelda's weight is a constant concern for us. Tomorrow we're starting the swimsuit calendar, which I'm most excited about. Uh, I've gone all over and found all sorts of colorful bikinis. Uh, the only problem that we may have is, will they fit? And so Zelda will not get the hug and dust bar tonight, and uh, she'll be more into veggies. Zelda wisdom inspires people to enjoy life and feel good about themselves. She is happy with who she is, and she has turned a disadvantage to an advantage, which is a, is a great wisdom in and of itself. Uh, who would think that you know, a, a fat little pudgy chick like Zelda could become a supermodel? Enjoy life, this is not a rehearsal, would be a strong statement that would represent Zelda's work is about. And she lets us sort of laugh at ourselves and, uh, and, and feel a little better about not being perfect. Zelda's career began by accident. I got Zelda when I was going through a divorce that, uh, and some, a friend said, either get a therapist or get a dog. And I figured, hey, you know, with the dog, I get therapy and unconditional love. And uh, that's what I got with Zelda. When Carol photographed her new puppy, she was struck by how appealing her image was, how it spoke to her from the heart. When she used her Zelda pictures as Christmas cards, her friends asked her to produce copies for them so they could send out Zelda cards too. And the Zelda empire was born. You're gonna really love this one, baby, because you get to be Cleopatra. Fantastic. And Zelda? You're Antony. When we got Baby, it was as a companion for Zelda. And please don't sulk, because you and Baby are best friends and need to share the space together. But it was also a lookalike, because we knew down the road that uh, Zelda would retire. And so we were looking for a lookalike who could be her understudy and follow in her footsteps, paw prints. Come on, come on, Zelda, will you turn around? You're really sort of grumpy, aren't you? When we first got baby Zelda, Zelda was not happy at all because Zelda thinks she is the queen, Zelda rules, and uh, she did not have 
room in her heart initially to share her space with baby. I think in baby's head, she wants to star. Uh, I can see that in some of the photographs where she really takes over. There's one where they're on a park bench and you can tell Zelda was not happy to share the spotlight with Baby. And Zelda hunched her shoulders and sort of hunkered down and looked uh, grumpy. And uh, Baby just was on and she was just like, whoa, photograph me because I want to be the star. Zelda's phenomenal success means that Carol spends a lot of time answering her fan mail. I'm more delighted than surprised that, at Zelda's success uh, because of all of the responses we get from people around the world uh, thanking us, saying, we get, I get emails all the time that say, I love you, Zelda, and people really love Zelda. The response I get from people makes me, makes me the happiest. Zelda and Carol make classroom visits to motivate children with learning disabilities. Back with you all. We had such a good time the last time we were here. Loved hearing your stories that you've written. This we brought so you can see what a good model she is. Zelda. <laughs> Pat Stewart is a teacher at Findlay Elementary School. Well, Zelda's had a tremendous impact, especially in the writing, because these students have a really difficult time processing information to get it in their head, let alone get it out on paper and writing. Writing about dogs or animals is sort of like a natural. This is the first time this year that I have seen such creativity come out of these students, and they've enjoyed it, and they came up to me and said, I love writing now, and that just made my whole year. We try to be responsible citizens and uh, try to give back because we've been given so much. From Jerome, Idaho, good morning, America. Last fall, Zelda and Carol toured the U.S. for Good Morning America to raise money for the families of September 11th victims. Zelda dressed as the people in each region they visited. Proceeds from a special card and poster went to the Red Cross Family Relief Fund. The Humane Society of Southwest Washington is trying to raise money for a new shelter. Supporters have the chance to meet Zelda. I'm, I'm not, though, as surprised by her success because there is a little Zelda in all of us. And uh, I think we all need to laugh at ourselves. And Zelda allows us to do that. We look at her and it's kind of a mirror image. Today is the swimsuit shoot. Carol and Shane size up Zelda's suits. I love this one. This is great. Do you think, you think she'll still fit in that, though? <laughs> Good question. This is the real question. Was this going to fit up top? Well, she's pretty hey, a little top heavy, isn't she? She's a little top heavy, but she's, you know, we're safe. She's 32, 32, 32. Yeah. Looks like a tight squeeze, but the suit fits. Despite the extra pounds, Zelda's still one sexy bitch. Meanwhile, back at home, baby has to be patient. Zelda still rules. Part of rural Virginia, there's a woman with an unusual business. Marsha Peterson is a fancy fowl breeder. Her flock of 69 includes silkies, dutches, salmon faverolles, and old English game bantams. These are two lovely little salmon faverole bantams, a little pear, this is the little cockerel, and this is the pullet. These little chicks would make a tasty meal for the predators that surround Marsha's farm. She's lost chickens to predators before, 
but not since she's had Azili. Azili is Marsha's favorite of four Akbash dogs who guard her chickens. These eight-week-old chicks will be going to a new home tomorrow. It's Azili's job to keep them safe from predators, like this hawk that's circling Marsha's farm in search of a quick bite. Azili scares away the hawk. And the chicks are safe from harm. For now. I established the pet chicken connection about a year ago in hopes of promoting them as an alternative pet. And what enables me to have these birds in the kind of setting that we have here is Azili and the rest of the dogs. They keep these birds alive in the woods where we're surrounded by predators. We have raccoons, possums, foxes, roving cats and dogs, birds of prey. And these dogs are on duty 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I can go away and feel comfortable. I can come home and find happy little living chickens instead of dismembered body parts and feathers. And I'm impressed every day at how well these dogs do their job. Akbash dogs guarded livestock for thousands of years in Turkey and were introduced to North America in 1970. Akbash means white head in Turkish. Their long legs give them speed, and they are incredibly calm around the stock they guard. The dogs job consists of lying around 99% of the time. They lie around all day. They may look comatose, but when a predator appears, they instantly alert and they can hit the fence in an amazing burst of speed. And they're the final line of defense against predation, and they enable me to have this hobby. Oh, this is Dutch. He's probably my favorite little rooster. He's a blue-silver Dutch bantam. And this is Muffin. These are silky bantams, and they're the only breed of chicken that has fur-like feathers. And how are you today, Prissy? She's a white Polish hen. She's very people-oriented, very tame and sweet. Chris Stamey lives an hour away from Marsha. He has 30 birds in his collection, including his favorite, Louis an old English game bantam rooster. When I expand my bird collection, it's because I've seen a type of bird that strikes my fancy, and I feel like they're a really beautiful bird that I like to look at. And so I can't imagine eating one, so it, it, they have to be pets. <laughs> Today, Chris is on his way to pick up the salmon faverol chicks Azili's been guarding. In order to guard effectively, Azili and the other dogs must behave submissively around the chickens. My method of training involves teaching the dogs to totally ignore the birds. I correct dogs for even making eye contact with the birds because that's the first step in the prey sequence. And once the dogs have been trained and they've internalized my prohibition against eye contact or moving toward the chickens or any kind of chasing or play behavior, then we have the finished product here, which is Azili, which is 24 hours, seven day a week protection, and that's my goal. Azili is alert to the sight or sound of any trespasser. Squirrels and rats sometimes sneak into the chicken house to eat the feed. He also checks out noises in the woods just on the other side of the fence. The dogs usually work in teams of two. Today, Azili is paired with one of the female dogs, Kimet. They sleep in the hot sun until they hear a potential predator. It's not a predator. It's Chris, who's come for the salmon faverol chicks. Azili has kept them safe. Chris, he's okay. Hey. Hi, baby. 
Yeah, they've been locked up in this pen all morning, and I guess I'll go. Always nibbling at your pen. <laughs> wonders if that's edible. And the good temperament will help right. them blend in with the rest of the block. Absolutely. Lot. Thanks to Azili, the salmon favoral chicks make it safely to their new home. Come on, young lady. There you go. Azili is the top dog in the household, and he does a very good job guarding my chickens, so his special privilege is to be allowed to come in, enjoy the temperature-controlled utility room, which is his exclusive domain. Azili has been such a very good boy. He's such a dedicated guardian of my chickens that we do everything in our power to make his life a little happier and give him a break from his job sometimes with walks in the woods. He gets to come in the house and enjoy the air conditioning. And it's the least we can do for such a dedicated boy. Doberman puppies sell for over $1,000 a piece. But this little puppy is blind, and if nobody takes her, she'll be put down. That would have happened to Emma, but Amy saved her. Amy is a three-year-old brown Doberman owned by Lisa Gustafsson and Elaine Dowd. Last year, on an impromptu visit to the breeder, Amy was drawn to the blind puppy. Amy went right over to the corner and just started staring at this puppy. And the puppy got up and came over and they touched noses and they started trying to kiss through the, uh, the gate. It was, just, it was just incredible. Elaine and Lisa decided to adopt the black puppy and named her Emma. Emma is now a year old. But the world is a dangerous place for a blind dog. Danger lurks everywhere is sometimes uh, in parking lots. She really needs to stick by Amy to, to know where the cars are, because even if she just goes out a little too far, she could get hit by a car. We're Emma's uh, eyes, so she really needs to listen to us, understand that when I say stop, I mean stop. When I say come, I mean come. For Emma's safety, it's imperative that she learn to obey her owner's voice commands and not rely solely on Amy's guiding. Lisa enrolled her in an obedience class. The big test is this afternoon. Emma walks with her head down, depending on her nose and ears to navigate. Amy became her guide dog by accident. She was playing around with a noisy toy, which Emma couldn't help but hear. One day, Amy picked up a plastic water bottle. Some bicyclist must have just dumped it in the field. And uh, she picked it up, and she started making noise with it. Just making this cracking sound with this plastic water bottle. And Emma just woof, ran right to her. Amy was going one way and turning, and Emma was just like molded to her body almost. And they just started taking off in the field, running like crazy. Elaine and Lisa decided to try a bell on Amy so that Emma could follow the sound. That was it. Ever since then, they play, they run, they go everywhere together. Amy takes her job very seriously. If she, if she doesn't have the bell on, she kind of just stands there and she's just waiting for us to put it on. And that's when we realize, oh, we don't have the bell on her. And as soon as you clip the bell onto her collar, she, she goes and she nudges Emma and she takes off. Blind Emma doesn't see the puddle until she feels it. Amy never lets her guard down. Even when they're playing, she's ready to step in to protect Emma from aggressive dogs. 
she can't read other dogs' body language. She doesn't know if the dog is friendly or, or aggressive, so she really relies on Amy to let her know that, that this dog's okay. With the test only a few hours away, Elaine practices with Emma. The test is important because although Amy guides Emma, the blind dog must learn to obey her master's voices too, so that she can be more independent without putting her life in danger. There you go, pretty puppy. What a beautiful girl. Amy's work with Emma has been instrumental in building up the blind dog's confidence. In fact, Emma has become so confident she wants to be top dog. Emma still thinks she can be alpha. She has no concept that she's blind. So now that she's not a puppy anymore, she's starting to challenge Amy for the alpha. Girls. At the test, Emma will have to follow the sound of Elaine's voice. Will she be confident enough to trust it without Amy by her side? It's time for Emma's obedience final. The blind dog has to walk 100 feet towards her owner's voice. To test her concentration and confidence, her path will be littered with obstacles and distractions. To pass, she must not let them interfere with her mission. Emma makes it. Amy's not just a guide for Emma, she's been a confidence booster too. I feel that this has really fulfilled uh, Amy's uh, purpose in life. I, I'm so proud of Amy. I'm so proud that she, she has the personality and the love to do that for another dog because there's some dogs that, that wouldn't, that wouldn't want Emma around at all. And I just, I love her to death because she's such a sweetheart and she's just so caring and I think she's the greatest.